guys. So I wanted to share with you the welcome packet that I have and the welcome packet is also my syllabus. So we begin recruitment at eighth grade or the level below. Um, if you're taking juniors, then you start recruiting at 10th grade, correct? So when we do our recruiting, I always have to make sure that I have all the information ready and available for the parents. Um, obviously for the students, but for the parents as well. So that way I'm not having to repeat myself over and over, which I've done in the past. Um, or if I am not able to have a parent meeting, I will have this particular packet together that I can email the student and email the parent, tell them, please review the packet. If you have any questions or of the questions that you come up with, please you know, email me back, call me, um, we can schedule an appointment and then I can, you know, sit down and talk to you with, you know, making sure that I've completely answered all of your questions about my program, my class, my course, um, whatever the case may be for you. Okay, so over the course of me being an instructor or a teacher here at CTHS or for Pasadena, I have been able to accumulate this information. So this is just the cosmetology one obviously but um it's something that maybe you can sh maybe take something from uh some ideas from and maybe incorporate this into either your syllabus or your welcome packet i also have a welcome back uh, packet for my current ninth graders that are going to become my 10th graders so that way they also have their syllabus for their course and they have their rules requirements fees certification information things of the sort so i would like to go through this it is a packet i call it a welcome packet simply because it is 26 pages long um, I, this year, because of COVID, printed it, or no, I'm sorry, I put in Schoology and it was digital, but I always print it, well, well, actually, I think I printed it this year and I had them pick it up, but I always print it for the students. Um, I like for them to have the piece of paper in their binder. Yes, we still do binders. Um, and we, it's something that when they need to find information uh, about a fee or how to pay something or the dress code or things of the sort, it's in their binder, something that lives in our classroom um, and actually in our program, it travels with them from ninth grade to 12th grade. So we just build on that information. Okay, so I'm gonna go through uh, some of them, I'm going to skim through some of them, I'll talk a little bit more about, but this document um, is available in the Schoology uh, course uh, that we have here, so if you guys would like to take a look at it, it is in the PDF form and a Word form, so if you'd like to take, copy, paste, edit, you know, whatever, take some snippets here and there, you're more than welcome to. Um, again, this is an accumulation of, it's overwhelming for a first year teacher, but this is an accumulation of the 12 years that I've taught cosmetology. Um, and I, this has helped so much and I feel like it's at a point where I'm happy with it. Every year I kind of tweak it here and there or I find little mistakes or errors or punctuation, things of the sort. But it's definitely something that I have worked on. So new teachers don't get overwhelmed. This doesn't have to be something that needs to be done for next school year. It can just be something you start and then build towards completing an entire packet or an entire program uh, line, out, uh, line out or outline for your program. Okay. So um, when we do recruitment, the students then um, accept apply for CTHS or the program and then they get accepted. I then give them this welcome packet when we have like an open house. They have some documents they sign in return and I'll go through all of that. So I give this information to my students the April or May before school starts. So my eighth, my current eighth graders right now, okay, that are going to be coming to CTHS next year as ninth graders, they already have this packet. So they're already doing all these things, paying their fees, buying their kits, um, getting everything ready that needs to for our program. So that way when I start on the on uh, August 17th, first day of school, 
we're ready to go. I do not spend time. I spend some time. I don't spend all the time going over this information because it's something that should already been done. They have a whole summer to go over it and ask questions, and parents included. Okay. So the first one is just a, um, obviously just a cover, cover type of cover letter type of just the cover just saying congratulations. It's going to be fun. Make sure you get the stuff done uh, by the signed date. Okay. And then, of course, I color a few different color and pictures just to kind of make it, and I put the logo here, just to make it interesting and kind of catchy for the students. If it's just black and white, a uh, bunch of words, it, you know, it doesn't always uh, entice the students. And, of course, we know they don't always read, so that definitely makes a big difference. So here, uh, this is just a little bit about myself, just welcoming them, letting them know a little bit about myself. Uh, some things from my resume just so that they know what kind of teacher they will be having and what my expectations will be um, as far as for them being in the program. So this is a just about me type of a letter, something that the parents can also read so they can kind of start to get to know me as we'll be working together for the next four years. Um, then at the bottom, I have remind message system. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a little bit. This is very, very important. And I don't know that we've mentioned this to you before. Maybe your campuses have. This is the non-discrimination statement. It is in uh, English and Spanish. This is from the district. I have copied pasted from there. So this particular statement needs to, or at least what I've been taught, is that anything that we send home needs to have this statement, OK? Um, and I believe it's in our emails as well. Okay, so that's very important. So that's like the main first thing that I have on uh, this particular packet. Okay, um, you're welcome to copy and paste this and make it small. It does, the print doesn't have to be big. I just made it one big page, but the print does, and I added the logos, but it, the print doesn't have to be big. It can be the smallest uh print that you can find the smallest font size you can find is fine it just has to be included in the documents that you send home okay um and then we start here with the syllabus so this is the information i used to just hand this out the first week of school and take forever to go over it but it would waste classroom time that i could be spending hands-on workshop learning starting chapter one let's let's get started so that's when I decided when I was running out of time with my lessons, I decided to go ahead and insert my syllabus in the welcome packet. That way they've already reviewed it. We've already had the Zoom meeting this, this, uh, this month and we've already gone through this information with the parent student meeting informational meeting. And so that's out of the way. Um, if there's any students that did not join the Zoom or that have not, I have like three students that haven't confirmed for next year that have not received the information, then I can do that one at a time or I can, once I get all of them together, um, we can do a little session just with, you know, those three sets of students. But it's a very small amount of students that don't already have this. So it's just pretty much basic information, school information, which I do add because a lot of times they do need the address of the school. And if they have it in the binder, they can go look for it or they can Google it, but we do use that a lot. Um, and then just information about, you know, tutorials, how to contact me. Again, the Remind is a huge way that we uh, contact the students. So that's in there several times. Um, and it's face because they do aesthetics in freshman year. So that's why it's face. Um, and then all the social media sites and skills you say, which is our CTSO, things of the sort, things that we use a lot in the class. Now the Facebook, YouTube, and uh, the Instagram, these particular ones are classroom related or industry related. They are not personal um, social media pages. Okay, don't wanna don't wanna go there. Okay. Um, I do have a website that is on our school page, so I also add that, and I have a class website that I also put on there as well, okay? Then, of course, my schedule, so that way they know um, if I, they contact me, if I'm not available, obviously, you know, I have class or whatnot. The next thing that I have on here is just pretty generic, pretty general, uh, the program rules um, that we have here. 
uh, and the requirements. The grade level are, you know, what their grades are, where the requirements for our particular, um, I'm trying to highlight, our particular um, course, okay? And then how we determine the grades and then my classroom, uh, my chance, my classroom expectations. Um, and then, you know, obviously uh, just about the uh, classroom management side of things. Okay, so then here we have the curriculum outline and the textbook that we use, things of the sort, uh, social media, again, how we communicate, and of course, any yeah, side notes that you want to add there, uh, definitely important to cover your, your tail as far as if you give them something, and I'll share this next here. Um, I do give them um and if it's something important by the way i do put a big old red box around it or something or highlight it or something of the sort but this for example is these are my teaks and these are the six weeks that we have and this is what we're going to be covering for the six weeks so the first six weeks we're going to go over tdlr which is the texas department of licensing and regulations this has to do with our license so that's the first thing we're going to dive into and then business and industry career paths etc cetera, etc cetera. so i always make sure to cover my tail okay i always add on here that anything can change um, any disclaimers, I definitely put that in because a student will hold you to this, okay? So if you just put that in, if you change things around, they don't freak out on you, okay? Then I have uh, the class website, just easy access, uh, the link here or the QR code where they can scan and it takes them directly. We use this a lot. So they just like that they have the QR code, they scan it and it just it's easy access for them in their binder. And then, of course, the cha YouTube channel that I have a lot of my YouTube videos on there, a lot of my lessons on the YouTube channel that if a student is absent, instead of having to reteach it, I assign that particular recording. They watch it and they can catch up with the, stu the students, you know, the next day they return to school instead of having to wait a whole day, you know, learning something that they missed the first section of and then they're super behind and confused and then I have to stop in class and catch them up and so I know you're probably done with computers this year, but trust me, pre-recording your lessons uh, or some skills is totally valuable. The next thing here that I have is a checklist. So uh, this one I call checklist on my uh, op my uh, sophomore uh, welcome back packet. I called it a task list. So these are just the things that they need to have done or they need to take care of by a certain date or time. Okay. And so before August 17, before school starts, this should have already been done. Okay. Um, and any clarification is just basic, uh, the most common questions that I get. And so I just added those in there. Then I have the remind message sign up. So this is a copy paste. This is an image. So I always change um, people's phone numbers, change parents, you know, they, they, they don't want to keep getting messages or if I have a sub or a long-term sub or someone of the sort, I add them to the group. And so every year I change my Remind uh, groups. And so this particular one, I changed it. And again, I named it, you know, just to kind of be an easy name for the students. Um, that's one of the, the most common ways that I communicate with the students and the parents. And um, it's just easier for me Students don't, I, I tried to teach them emails, but they're just not wonderful at emails. And so for me, it's just easier um, to just get them to message me through Remind, okay? So that that is on there. And then they have this the whole school year. So if they have, you know, a change of, a self, change of phone numbers, then they all can always come back to this page and they have the code to sign back up. I also include in here with pictures and description what our dress code is for our program. So we have salon days, we have industry days where we go do field trips, we have competition days where we do our CTSOs like SkillsUSA. I just noticed that 
space should not be there. Um, and then we have spirit days, which is, you know, jeans and t-shirt. But um, I do incorporate this because that is one of the main questions students will ask, what's the dress code? Well, we have regular school dress code, but in our particular industry, our pathway, when we do things and we do different things, this is what we need you to wear. And so we tell the parents that this is something for the four years, so it's okay like down here, it's okay for them to um, buy maybe shoes that are $30 instead of like some cheapy $10 shoes that they're going to toss because, you know, you know, just $10. But it is something that they will be using for the entire four years that they're with us. Um, and then overview of the cosmetology program. So this particular one just talks about their hours that they need to obtain, like maybe, you know, particular things that are required for your program. Um, this talks about their, uh, their the testing for their, their licensure. Like for yours, it might be a certification, how much it costs, you know, what are the milestones, the scholarships the district offers, um, you know, different things that um, are required for our particular program. So that way, when they come in at ninth grade, they're like, oh, I'm going to come do hair and makeup, you know, and play with play with nails and nail polish. And then, you know, come senior year, then they get hit up with all these fees and, oh, wait, I have to take a test? What? what what's going No one told me. So then we, you know, I, I add this information each year. I, I water it down as we go because, you know, it's detailed at the beginning, but, you know, towards the, because we talk about it so much in class that, you know, they don't need so much detail, you know, come their senior year, their syllabus is not this detailed. But um, it definitely is information that we want to make sure they have from the very beginning. Okay, um, and we give it to the students before they commit to, you know, coming to us. So that way, if it's something that, oh, that's not what I thought the program was, well, then they can change their mind before they commit to the four-year program. Okay. All right, so then we do get a license. We have to have a permit register. They have to register for a permit. So then I have the permit information of how to make the payment. I made a video so they can scan this and watch the video of me explaining about you know how they can make the payment um, and things of the sort. So that is just something that we do. That can be something like if you have to pay for your certification, it can be something like that that you add to it. We have to do it at the beginning of our program. You might have to, that might be a piece of paper or a document that you share the second semester or only your senior year, okay? But for us, cosmetology at the beginning, that's why it's in here. Um, and then when they get their permit, this is a copy paste or a picture of the actual permit. And so, well, I guess copy paste, not a picture, but um, of a student's permit. I just took a white out and you kind of white it out there, the actual name and information of the student. But this is what it they it looks like so they know what to expect when they're getting their permit. So this can be maybe a picture of the certification that the student should be looking forward to getting in the program. After that, I have the course kits. So at each grade level, they have a kit. And it's, you know, supplies that they use in the program. They use them through the whole four years but um, it's supplies that they get to keep. And so, you know, each level has a different uh, kit that contains different things. And obviously, you know, the things are different and, and get better quality as they go along. Um, we're a cheap partner school. That's why it's so expensive to get that as a blow dryer, curling iron, and all of those big, uh, big ticket items. So that's why it's so much. But for your program, you might have something like this that you might need, you know, the, the students to purchase um, for their for their course. OK, so for their pathway. So that's something that you might want to add on there. So the reason why I add this on there um, is that so, again, when they come in ninth grade, they are aware that this program you need to be serious about being in this program because there is, you know, it's a you know, it's, it's a commitment. And we need to make sure that, you know, you're okay with that. And we also let students know if, if for whatever reason, this is not feasible for you, tell us we have kits that we can let you borrow or we can help, you know, fundraise to get you a kit or through salon days or whatnot. So that's definitely something that I don't want the, the parent to come, you know, they don't get these two kits and then they really need this kit because they're going to use their mannequins every day for the next two years now with the blow dryers and curling irons. 
And then the parents like, whoa, wait, no one told me when I enrolled my student, no one told me I had to pay this. So I want to be very transparent up front with the parents and the students just to let them know that there is some kind of a commitment to this and there are things that are required. We're always here to help. Um, obviously, if the student is not able to, to obtain these items or purchase these kits, but we do want to make sure we let the parents know ahead of time. Okay. Um, and I would suggest talk, talking to your bookkeeper if you do something like this, just to make sure you're in the clear, everything's good. I approved this whole packet with my administration before, um, you know, giving this out to the students. And I go to my, every year, I go to my bookkeeper and I say, hey, um, I'm going to go ahead and start passing these out. Are you okay with it? Do we need to change um, any, you know, any of the finances? We do charge them for shipping and handling. So shipping, I'm sorry, shipping and handling taxes are included in these prices um, because they're items that the student orders. So they have to pay ta the taxes on them. And so just get with your bookkeeper and they will tell you, you know, you say, okay, my kit is a hundred dollars. Uh, how much do you need me to charge a student for, you know, what you need to cover? And so the bookkeeper will tell you, and then you go from there. Now we do not make money off of the kits. We don't feel it's fair to, it's, our, it's already a lot. We don't feel it's fair to charge the students more. So we don't make money off of the kits. We just want the kids to have the supplies they need to be successful in class to accomplish all the skills they need to learn, okay? Um, and we have them pay online, okay? So we're gonna go through that in just a little bit. Um, and then for their freshman kit, so since this is for the freshman welcome packet, um, I add the individual item, the individual list of what all is in this particular kit, okay? And they, oh, I just noticed that this is not the right list for that. Okay, good thing I was looking through this. I need to fix this. This is the COVID one, I believe, and we need to change that to the other one. But um, because tissue and paper towels don't come in that particular kit. But um, so they will have a list of the supplies that they will be getting in their kit. And then they have a link and a video where I have pre-recorded what is in their kit and also how to organize their kit for class. So that is definitely something that um, we, I have on there so the students know that those are the items they're purchasing. Now, the, we also do let them know if you don't wanna buy your own kit or your own supplies um, uh, through the school, if you wanna make your own, they can. So sometimes if you're having the students purchase things and their parents are already in the industry, they maybe not want to order through the school. They may want to just get it themselves. And so that is also something that, you know, to consider for those students that do have relatives within the industry that could get them those things um, at a different price or they already have them. Um, all of the payments, all of the, the financials that we do on first for cosmetology, uh, we do online. We do not collect money anymore. Collecting money is, I'm going to be honest, such a hassle. You have to open a collection. You have to wait for it to be approved. Then you get the email that it's approved and then you're able to collect money and you collect money and then you have to be very careful about the money that very particular about how you handle that. And then you have to turn it in constantly and you know then you need to make change and then it's just it's a lot to keep up with and having so many stu 165 students in our program it was just too much so what we have transitioned to is online payments so every payment that a student makes they do it through the rev track system um, this is the link. I, I, I screenshot, you know, all the different steps and I wrote down instructions. I did a QR code to where they can go directly to the link of the website or here's the link and then they just follow the steps and make their payment. The only thing is that um, they do get charged a 4% processing fee, which is what RevTrack charges the district to use the system. Um, but other than that, I do not touch money from the students. 
that is a whole headache that I just don't have time for. And so if that's something that you're able to maybe avoid, um, I would suggest it. For if we if we're going on a field trip and they're paying for the you know the bus, if we're going on you know a field trip and they need to buy a ticket, they pay it through there. If they need to buy a T-shirt, if they need to pay a kit fee, if they need anything that we have them purchase, it's done online. Trust me. Oh my gosh, it makes your life so much easier. And then the students, you know, you, they don't have to come find you to make the payment. They can pay it online at home which is so much more easier for the students. Um, and so they just, it's, and, and then you get perfect records. You don't have to worry about, you know, getting, typing everything right and printing the receipt and printing one for you and printing one for the student and making sure you check it off on the list. No, you just have them make the payments online. You ask your bookkeeper for the report, monthly, weekly, semester, however you wanna do it. And then they'll send you the report and you can see who it's a spreadsheet, who's paid, how much, when they paid uh, and things of the sort. So it's just so much more easier. Um, so I, I would highly recommend that um, that system in your course. Then, of course, we have Skills USA competitions. That's our CTSO, our student run organizations. So I do have the details here. Their membership is due on September 1st. I let them know ahead of time. I don't collect the money um, this this year. I'm not collecting it till September just to see, you know, I want to wait and see what COVID does. But usually I will collect this uh, before the school year ends. So, for example, my ninth graders right now, if that are going to be 10th graders, if they want to participate in SkillsUSA next year, they're going to pay their $16 membership now. So it's there. And so I know the beginning of school who is going to participate and who I need to start training for what competition. So because we get started at the very beginning, a lot of times we're super busy once school starts and I just don't have that extra time to be certain, you know, who's paid, make sure you pay, you haven't paid. OK, great. We've got to drop you from the competition. Now we got to find a different team member and we just don't do that. So I just prep ahead of time. I know who's going to who's gonna do what, who's going to be where, who's qualified, who's paid, and let's get rocking and rolling on the, you know, in August. I don't, I don't like to wait till the last minute. I've done that too many times and it just doesn't work out. I make sure that for all of our conferences and competitions, I let them know how much, when, and where they're going to be so they have some idea, again, letting them know things could change. Okay. I add a snip, and this is a little blurry, but I do add a snippet of the calendar in here, of the, the next year's calendar that has been approved. Um, so that way the students know. Now this particular one is blurry, so I also email them or pass them out an actual, you know, non-blurry calendar. But this year I just was not able to get a clear, clear clipping. I think my screen was just a little too small when I was trying to do that, but just it's good for them to, to know, you know, have the schedule and we do our hours. And so that's why they have this particular calendar in there. Then their classroom supply list. So things that I ask them to bring, things that we use in the classroom that we share and we go through a crazy lot with all the projects. So those are things that you can ask for. Um, and I always have them to, um, buy from the dollar store don't buy anything that is going to cost money a lot of money because we share it uh, with everyone and then i will send them a remind message what i like to do is um, this year i'm going to do it in august but i usually have the students bring the stuff their supplies in the the semester before so for example my my eighth graders coming in to be ninth grade they would have brought me the these supplies on a regular school year, they would have brought them to me uh, the 1st of June when I do the summer camp. And then that way I have all the supplies and I see, okay, what's missing? What do I need to go purchase? Um, that way I have everything organized, you know, in the classroom, ready, set up, out of the packages. We have enough of them and we're ready to rock and roll first day of school. Okay, I used I hate when I used to hate when students would bring one student would bring one thing one day and another student would bring something else and and this way I just know okay 
we need more glue, we need more markers, we need more scissors, we need, and I just go buy those things on my own. So I just like to have everything ready on the first day. After that, we have the syllabus uh, student and parent agreement, and it's just them signing that they agree that they've read and agree with everything, all the information that they read for this um, particular course. Then we have parent emergency contact, my information, and then information about the student, um, the, the parent or guardian, and then of course, emergency contacts. This I keep in the student folder that I create um, so that way, I know we have the information at the school level, but if I ever need to contact a student or a parent, you know, sometimes the information that we have in Mizuni or in Skyward is not correct. And so they're so eager to get started, you know, at the new school at the freshman level that they'll give all the information. And so um, I, this is gold. I, I hold on to these papers, these documents. Um, and then I have a video permission uh, slip just because I take a lot of pictures and videos um, during field trips and, you know, events and during the classroom and lessons. And so I just want to make sure I have, we have the permission through the district, um, but I just extra want to cover myself and want to make sure that the students are comfortable with me taking their pictures and using them after they graduate. And everything's, of course, school related and content appropriate and things of the sort. At the very end, we have an application that they have to fill out for their license for their permit. And so that's an, a piece and these are a little blurry. So I've attached a different, a more clear image um, in their, you know, all their documentation that they get, but um, they are able to print this out, fill it out, and then we can do the registration process. So all of these documents that are signed on a regular school year, the student will receive this welcome packet. They will go through it and then June 1st, they'll or that first Monday when I teach the camp at CTHS, I schedule students to come in. They bring me these last pieces of paper. I put them in their folder. Um, they pay their fees. They do their TDLR registration for their, for their license. And then I have their folder ready to go. Their supplies are, you know, already dropped off and everything is there ready to go on for the first day of um, school in August. I order all the kits in the summer, um, package them and get them all ready. Any back orders, make sure, you know, to have all that together. So on the first week of August, when the students come back, um, on campus or when the teachers come back on campus, what I do is I get that um, remind, I send a remind out and say, okay, your kids are here. You guys go ahead and come on over and pick up your kit. Anybody that has not dropped off your supplies, your classroom supplies, go ahead and drop those off and we're good to go. I typically have about five students that I would have not had contact with and then I'm catching them up, but it's less than, you know, 70 students that I have. It's just the five that, you know, I just need to work with. So it's over the years I've learned that, um, I know this is a lot of information, but over the years I've learned that these, these, this is information that's the most requested, the most asked about, and the things that just, I, I would always have to repeat myself. So now that I have this, just it's so much clearer for the parents and the students about what cosmetology is about, what the four years are about. And then just if they ever have questions, they always refer back to this. And if there's ever a situation or an issue, I always refer back to it myself. Well, did you read your welcome packet? Well, did you read your syllabus? Did you sign it? Yes, you did. Okay, well, here it says X, Y, Z. And so we get into that conversation. So. Please feel free, I know it's a lot, but please feel free to copy, paste, change pictures, you know, copy, whatever you need to do. Um, you're more than welcome to take it uh, and change it around and edit or get bits and pieces to make it fit your needs. Um, I will, again, this is in the Schoology in both uh, Word document form and PDF form. Now, one thing I will absolutely suggest is when you do have this done, obviously save it in your Word document, but save it as a PDF because if you don't, if a student opens it on their phone or on 
a different computer like a Mac or a PC or, or whatnot, it changes everything. So like if you want it to be perfect here and the pictures here and the logos here and the and you know all of these is spacing and there's one you know thing for each page it's going to change if it's not in a pdf form so pdf form will freeze it in so i know most of you know that but you know i didn't know that and so i had to learn the hard way when you know students were saying well this doesn't make sense well because i started on half a page and it just it was all over the all over the place so that just definitely helps um, keep everything in order. It keeps everything clean, consistent. Nothing can be changed or edited, and it just works out. Um, now, as far as for the documents in the back, um, this year the students will assign those electronically or print them out and email or scan them or just have them ready. Uh, I can make copies for them. Uh, this year is just kind of like one of those years that you just have to figure out and you go as you figure it out as you go but on a regular year i would have this you know printed like i said and i would have that in a folder for them okay so i do keep my oh my apologies wrong one i do keep my um folder here so um what i do is i have each school year so this was the list this past year and so my next school year is the 21-22. Um, in at the end of this school year, I start planning for my following school year. So this, these are all the documents I have collected so far and have used so far for my course. So what I do when I start planning my 21-22 school year, I look back at my 2021 or a 1921 school year. And then when I click on it, it has all everything I typed, did, printed, handouts, everything I did, um, all from this entire school year. And so I archive um, all of those documents or <laughs> put them all together, keep them all together. That way I know um, you know, we're, if I need to, oh, last year I did X, Y, Z. Oh, well, let me go find, you know, whatever I did last year. Um, CTSO, test, everything. Okay. So it's just a matter of keeping organized with all the things that you do. And it's just a lot easier to do it by school year uh, for me. Um, just so that way, you know, Oh, two years ago we did X, Y, Z, and it just I can go to it quickly. So I just want to share that information with you. I hope it helps somebody. Um, I definitely have am here for any questions if you have any or any you know if you need help with anything. Please do not hesitate to reach out. I am more than happy to you know to to work with you with whatever you know you're working on with your program. Um, really quick, just I'm going to skim through. We do have the sophomore. So the one you just saw was the, the freshman welcome packet. And this is the welcome back packet for my current freshmen that are going to be sophomores. So same concept, the task list, you know, things that they have to do, um, important dates. So this is not as extensive just simply because you know, they already know me, they know the pro program, what's required of them. And then these, some of these, the syllabus is kind of a copy of pay and paste because it's the same information. Their teaks obviously are different because um, it's a different course, but social media things are the same. Non-discrimination statement is there. Their sophomore, piece, uh, um, sophomore fees are different. Um, then the freshman ones, I still make sure to incorporate the same information that's important so parents see it again. Um, how to make the payment, their kit, their sophomore kit. This is what the other one should have looked like with all the supplies in it. Um, but this is the sophomore kit, you know, um, the supplies that they need to buy, their classroom supplies, their so same thing, same information. Again, a lot of copy and paste um, and just re repetitive because, you know, creatures of habit, we've got to do things over and over and see them continuously to be successful at them and to keep those in the front forefront of our minds.
So I just wanted to share all this information with you so that you can see how um, I do the welcome back packet and the uh, welcome uh, packets. That way, you know, hopefully it helps some of you guys out, you know, encourage you to start thinking. And I know over the summer is not any time that we want to touch on anything school related, but I, I, I remember as a new teacher, all I wanted to do was work on school stuff. So if that's you, this may be great for you. If that's not you, that's okay. Totally fine. Start a little bit at a time. Maybe next year, you know, you start putting things as you start your school year. You start putting some of these documents in a folder. And so then that way at the end of the year or the following school year, you already have those documents and you just have to change the dates or, you know, minor bits and pieces of information. So that's what I have for you for today. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I know it's a lot. Again, if you have any questions, always here to help. Um, but thank you so much and you guys have a good rest of your day.